Hello everyone and welcome back to Only One United. So today I'm not alone. I'll not be doing any of those match reactions today because it's not a match day. Uh, I have a very special guest with me today. It's Mariam. Uh, so yeah, guys, uh, she is from uh, She Scores Bangers. She has her own YouTube channel. So first of all, if you haven't already subscribed to it, make sure to go to the channel. We'll add the link in the description. We'll also tag them. Go to their channel. Uh, subscribe it and let's ensure that all United fans are following She Scores Bangers, are subscribing to the channel because we need to ensure they get to 1K subscribers before the World Cup begins, before uh, Mariam starts the Canada prop for, uh, during the World Cup. Yeah. So yeah, welcome to the channel, Mariam. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so a little more introduction about Mariam from my side. So basically, She Scores Bangers is, uh, you know, a prime destination for everything related to women's football. You want news, you want contract news, you want opinions, you want something related to how the injury concerns have been rising in women's football. You know, one place that I would suggest to all of you would be She Scores Bangers. They basically, you know, focus solely on, uh, not solely, they, they focus uh, on national size, especially England, Spain, USA, Canada. Let's not forget Canada, guys. I'm 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 in, I'm making sure that we do as much Canada prop as we can in this video. Let's put uh, them on the map. Yeah, <laughs> uh, they also do stuff related to UWCL and the WSL. So there are a lot of things that Mariam covers on her channel. So please make sure to subscribe to the channel. And like I said, let's get them to 1K subscribers before the World Cup begins. And uh, yeah, guys. Uh, so one more thing that I'd like to add is. My favorite video of Mariam's channel is the one where she talks about ACL injuries with uh, a, a, an ACL expert. So that is one of my favorite videos because I also have had gone through, I also have gone through ACL injuries. So yeah, that's kind of a topic which I relate to and which is a topic which everyone needs to know about because we have seen so many players in women's football get these ACL injuries not even ACL, like any kind of uh, ligament injuries that we are seeing right now. Yeah. So most of them are ACL injuries. So yeah, that that's a very informative video. So I'll ensure to add the link of that video as well to the description. So after you've gone through uh, Mariam's channel, subscribing to it, make sure to come back to our video, <laughs> watch the video. And then after that, go to the ACL video. Because if uh, I, I would suggest something... I would suggest that make sure that is the first video that you watch of Mariam's because that was my video as well, which I first saw of Mariam's. So yeah, there are a lot of good videos, guys. I'm yeah. I'm stretching the introduction <laughs> because yeah, it's a, it's 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 a very good uh, channel because there are many things that me to like I have also uh, gotten to know through the channel. So yeah, very well done, Mariam. It's a very good channel. I'm <laughs> I think glad. I, I need to add more adjectives right now, but yeah. <laughs> It's, it's, it's amazing. It's, it'll make sure to subscribe. I'm very happy. Yeah, very important conversation yeah. we should be having. Everybody can get an ACL injury. It's not just uh, the athletes that we watch. Everybody can can be a, a harm at one. Yeah. Uh, so, guys, uh, we'll talk about United today. And we'll also, like I said, add a, some sort of a Canada prop to our uh, video. So, first, let's talk about Jade Riviere, our amazing fullback signing in the winter yeah. window. She's from Canada. She's a big Manchester United fan. There are a lot of expectations. People are mm -hmm. saying she's the successor to Ona Bhatia in case yeah. Ona des uh, decides to leave. But uh, I don't think so. I think Jade and Ona are different players. And I think Ona won't leave because United are getting the UWCL. And when Ona stays, Ona and Jade will fight it out amongst themselves and Blundell as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know m m uh, all three of them will uh, improve themselves during that competition. But mm -hmm. Mariam, what do you think about Jade? I know that you have followed her, uh, you know, career more mm -hmm. closely than others. So, right. what is your opinion of this signing and Jade as a whole? I think this is a great signing for both United and Jade River herself. Obviously, this is her first first professional contract straight out of college. Not something that you see big clubs and big uh, leagues bring in and do players that have never had a professional contract but she is somebody who has continuously impressed on the international stage she was recruited to the senior canadian squad at 16 so very very young and any player that gets recruited at a, at a such a young age is a player that is special and has since been involved in the world cup 2019 as well as the 2020 olympic 
a gold medal winning squad has been kind of more of a substitute player but over the years specifically the last year in the CONCACAF championship as well has started a lot more games overall she does have 36 appearances but for a player who's only just turned 22 I believe like a week ago that is a big thing she's already gone massive uh, experience with veterans She's already been able to and, and exposed to multiple different partnerships in the back, in the midfield, with wingers in front of her. And so for a young player like herself, even though straight out of college, when she's been in the Canadian setup, she has been exposed to a lot. And so it's not that this young player is coming in with not much on, on her resume. She is a very, very good player well-suited experienced uh on the national uh, level and when i say experience on the national level because she's gone to the world cup and because she's been inv involved in the olympics she, this is a 13 i mean 18 year old sorry that's been going up against 25 30 year old attackers you know so she is somebody who's not afraid to go up against more uh, aggressive players she's very physical that is something that is very very kind of unique in her style of play is that she's physical in progression of the ball which is something that i'll get to in a second but when she's on the ball she can be aggressive when she's in duels she's also very aggressive she's physical but with aggression comes you have to be very uh kind of aware of how you step in you don't want to draw fouls especially kind of in the back area you don't want to be drawing penalties any kind of uh, free kicks around the box and so even though she's physical and aggressive she's very aware of her positional and body movement and that is another thing on her game as well as she's very tactical thinking and so we see her work on the ball is very good but off the ball as well she knows where to posi position herself she knows where to push it's almost like she has an eye for where the ball is going next which is very special for a 20 year old or 22 year old like herself and so that is something that she'll obviously be bringing into united with the, like you mentioned on about the Hannah, Blund Hannah Blundell kind of similar play to her as well more of a modern style fullback and I think that modern fullback in the modern game right now it's not a market that's flooding with a lot of players right it's been consistently a hard market to fish out players like her and so with the united recruitment being able to put an eye on jade rivera and bring her in she's still young she's obviously got a lot to develop but she's a modern fullback that showcases all the modern attributes of being able to push forward right she can overlap she can form good partnerships with the wingers she does this very brilliantly with Janine Becky on the national team um, and will probably not have an issue playing with any of the wingers that United have because there's a plethora of them she can push forward into the middle she can move that ball in front but she can also track back she's very pacey which is again another attribute that you do need in that game is that you can pull forward but when there's a counterattack, you need to be able to track backwards and help that defensive side because you just don't want a fullback that can just attack and build partnerships up front. You want them to be very well-versed in that winger area, right? And so she's very good modern fullback. That's how it's it's described. She's very good on her. She's predominantly right-footed, but we have seen her be very able to kind of, uh, if she's in a sticky situation, she can definitely use her left foot. And that's something that has also progressed in her game specifically in the last year as well. So not in a few years, we'll probably be able to see her be a very two-footed uh, fullback. And so she's a very good tactical, minded thinking player. She's very physical in, in progression. She knows how to play that right back position, pull over, uh, lay over, kind of know what to do with that winger and another thing that i want to say she's very adaptive um canada has not been the most lucky when it comes to injuries or players that have been you know able to consistently show up on on camps and beth Friesman is great in bringing in new players to kind of just test out the, the system but even when that is happening jade river can adapt pretty well with whoever she's playing alongside in the defense side or on top of her or even she's coming in a substitute in the game that the momentum is still not kind of decided she can adapt very well so that is something that is very very important in a team like united that's kind of trying to break new barriers and so her eye of the game her understanding she has very good tech tactical sense of the game great pace great defensive mind great offensive mind very good on one-on-one -on -one v positioning and yeah she is a gem that united have been able to lay hands on so uh, we were lucky that our recruitment team, uh, you know, scouted yeah. her and uh, and signed her. Uh, that's what I take it uh, take from what you have said. And uh, okay, I think yeah. you've mentioned the tactical mm -hmm. uh, brilliance of 
Jade a lot of times in our conversation right now. Mm-hmm. So that is something that I am also looking forward to. Of course, she is coming back from an injury, so it will take her some time to get back to her best self. But yeah. I feel uh, from what uh, you've said and from what I've seen from Jade in those few Concacaf games as well, and uh, mm-hmm. a few highlights that I've seen on YouTube. I mm-hmm. think uh, uh, I've seen her play. Uh, you know, on like uh, she she has a good attacking sense. Mm-hmm. She's, she has a good attacking outlet to her game. Mm-hmm. And now that you're mentioning it, yes, there is a defensive side as well. But uh, you say that she's adaptive. So, from your opinion, what do you think would be her best position? Would it be as a right back or a left back? Because right now, Ona is playing as a right back, but Ona can also play as a left back. So, you know, I'm just trying to see like. Are both of those players versatile, or will we have to settle for uh, Jade as the right back and then Ona shifts to the left back? I think because she's so young and she's still she's showing so much progression in such little time, it wouldn't be su- a surprise to me if I see her progress into that left back position. She does primarily, even in college, played in that right back position. Um, sometimes does actually play like kind of like a right wing back type of position, but mainly on that right back starting position like i said she is predominantly right-footed but has been showing really good progression with that left foot even if sometimes you see and you're like well i actually don't know what kind of footed she is um so primarily she does play in that position but like i said because she's so young she's already impressed so much and it doesn't really take her that much time to develop and i mean if you got anna Batier as your role model or somebody in camp who you're training with you're probably going to get better very very fast and so i think even if the idea of having Jade Rivera on the on the right back position and then Ona starting at left back, those are very very dangerous uh, fullbacks that you would want to come up against. I don't think any winger would enjoy uh, coming up either against Jade or Batier. A lot of wingers do switch during mid game, but I mean, imagine having to come up against Batier switching sides and you've got Jade Rivera in front of you. So that's probably not very fun. Um, she is adaptive, like I've said. She has worked with multiple different partnerships in the back and in front of her. And I think that is a quality that can kind of diffuse in other areas of her game. So from what I take away from what you've just said is that United are winning everything once Jade and Una are starting <laughs> as the fullbacks. <laughs> yeah, I mean... So, uh, it's wishful thinking at the end of the day. But yeah, I think uh, uh, we are in... like People are, have, have some expectations. But uh, mm-hmm. I feel that, you know, Jade is going to exceed those expectations because even yeah. with Una, like when she signed... I mean, it's not fair of me to compare Una and Jade right now, but sure. uh, I, I I think the journey that they like Jade will take and what Una has taken. Mm-hmm. I think when Una signed, there were a lot of there was a lot of hype around her. There were a lot of expectations, and th- she has exceeded those expectations to some some extent. Yeah. Uh, if not the world's best right back, I think she's one of the best right back, top three, top four, easily. For sure. Yeah, I think so I one think, thing yeah. that I also want to mention when we talk expectations, she's not the first Canadian player that we've seen get recruited at a very young age on the national team and then straight out of college get a professional contract. Jesse Fleming is a great example of that. She was in the UCLA, really impressed, very similar to Jade, was recruited into the national team. I think I was 16, 17, so very, very young. And then her first professional contract was Chelsea. You don't see Chelsea hang, handing out their, a player, their first ever professional contract. And look at her now. I mean, she is one of the big faces in Chelsea. Same thing with uh, Julia Grosso over Juventus. Again, she kind of did actually grow up with uh, Jade Rivera in the young system, but got recruited very early on in the young, uh, at a young age in the senior squad. Her first professional contract out of college was also Juventus. And she's doing very, very great, impressive stuff and was being linked up with very big teams. And so this isn't a route or a program that we haven't seen before. And the results have been phenomenal. And I think with Jade, she has very similar expectations of what Jesse Fleming had and Julia Grosso. And I wouldn't be surprised to see she do the exactly the same and kind of go in that same route. And so it's a system that I would want United fans to kind of believe in and look at the other results and see, well, actually, we got very lucky here. Even though she's young and she's nursing an injury right now, hasn't played in a minute. I think probably the injury comes actually at a very great time. You'd rather her get injured at a young age when she hasn't yet kind of uh, bursted into that professional scene rather than later. And because she's so young, she's adaptive like like we've talked about. She's going to recover slightly quickly and kind of jump into that role. And so 
I like to compare it to Jesse Fleming and, and Julia Grosso and see how their progression and how their program, it's pretty much the exact same footsteps, really. So I think, you know, we can look at the, the, the results of the program and see if that can happen exactly with Jade Rivera here. Now that you mentioned Jesse Fleming, I forgot that she's Canadian because I think yeah. she's be like it feels like she's been at uh, Chelsea for a long, long time. And I, I think you're right. She she, she she straight away joined like her first professional contract was Chelsea. So she's yeah. done really well over there. I think uh, Fleming, Guru Raitin, like those are the youngsters at Chelsea and they're doing really well. And I think we yeah. can adapt to a similar system or maybe we can improve that system of, you know, getting good players, good quality players, uh, identifying them at a young age and providing them the platform to do well mm-hmm. at a big stage. So I think that's what uh, it is all about at the end of the day, you know, improving For the sure. accessibility to the players as well, not just to the fans, to the players as well, that they have the resources to improve themselves. And I think United are at a crucial stage, like you mentioned, they are on the cusp of getting into the UWCL, which is like a very mm-hmm. big thing in the fan base as well right now, because, mm-hmm. you know, this is something that we have been chasing since our championship days. This is mm-hmm. something that we have wanted because uh, United are a big club. Like if we talk about the club as a whole, of course, the women's team came too late into existence. Of course, yeah. there was a team before, but that was uh, disbanded after the ownership came. But yes, uh, so it came a little too late. But now that it's finally here. People want to be in Europe because you associate United with one of the biggest clubs in the world. Mm -hmm. And it is time that the women's team also do justice to the name of Manchester United and come into the European side and I think European tournament. And I Mm -hmm. think Jade, uh, you know, this season, I think she won't get to play maybe towards the end of the season she might play. And I would not want her to play much now that she's coming after an injury. I know there's a World Cup, but Mm-hmm. I feel that uh, it's better to prevent and prepare than to repent and repair. Like if yeah. you force her into playing games right now, it might have a negative impact and, you yeah. know, it might aggregate something. Uh, she's already, something. from what I've seen, yeah. she's already back on the pitch, kind of getting that hip movement back. Um, I remember talking to Beth Priestman earlier on in the year and she did have expectations of Jade being back in the February window. I think now, considering we've just broken into February, that's probably a bit too soon. Um so she, she, I would say she probably would be available by the end of the season, but it's a matter of managing that injury and making sure she doesn't go injured into the World Cup because that yeah. would be catastrophic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, basically I, what I wanted to say was that Jade uh, going into a United side who are new to the UWCL mm-hmm. might have some good ex- uh, like might have some good impact as well i know she hasn't played in the uwcl but uh, like you said she has been around so many talented players in the national team setup especially and at united as well she'll get to play with the likes of ona bati alessio yeah. russo elato mario so have some have won something big for their respective nations as well yeah i mean she's play- yeah. she plays against or not against uh with uh kidisha buchanan a five-time yeah. champions league winner i mean they play together in the back so yeah. if there is a champions league winner that can um give her some uh, champions league advice she she plays right beside her on the national exactly. team so that's already great advice and, and mentorship that she's surrounded by yeah and i think uh, like i follow houston dash as well uh, mm-hmm. closely so they have a player called alicia chapman mm-hmm. uh, we love chappy over at dash <laughs> and uh, uh, i think yeah. uh, she also plays as a fullback i know she's yes. had a lot of injuries but She's kind of a veteran and, uh, of course, with Jade being a fullback, uh, uh, she she might look up to Chapman as well. And I think Chappie is another good player in mm-hmm. Canada and in Dash as well. Yeah. I know injuries haven't been kind to her lately, but yeah. yes, like this is something like, like I was adding a personal touch to it because I love Chappie. She's an amazing player for Dash. Chappie is very much loved and she's got a very aggressive side that I'm sure she takes on uh, Jade River with her to the gym to kind of get bulked up for that full back position. So yeah, no, Jade is very much surrounded by veterans, um, experienced players and a very, very good group that is willing on to take on youngsters uh, because this is a very common thing that we see in the national system. New players coming in, impressing and having really good leadership around them. And so Jade Rivera is, I'd like to think, in very good uh, safe hands. Exactly. Yeah. So now that she's joined United, so we'll shift focus from Jade to United and we'll mm-hmm. add Jade's part as well into this segment. Yeah. So United this season, I think, uh, you know, I expect a lot of things because uh, 
Skinner has been given all the resources. He's made a lot of changes as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are winning. Like at the end of the day, people, you know, people want us to win, and we are winning. Mm-hmm. But it's the type of uh, gameplay that we implement. This, like this is my concern personally that mm-hmm. we aren't winning games uh, with more domination. We aren't winning the games that we should win by a huge margin. We are mm-hmm. winning those games by a one goal or a two goal margin. And in a mm-hmm. league like WSL, where there are only 22 games, I think per per team, uh, goal difference is very important. Mm-hmm. Like uh, like if you if you compare it to a men's league, men's England league, I think uh, over there goal difference might not have that much of an issue. But uh, with United being in WSL right now, in WSL games aren't that much. Um, that's why I think it matters obviously, a lot. Yeah. Oh no, I mean it, it's getting really tight on the line. You look at that. top even five at this point in 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 the table what's separating them is probably not points it's goal difference and so i think that is a valid concern for any kind of fan base but i feel like the transition that we've seen from last year to this year has been showing aspirations of dominance i mean they their last wsl game sure it was very tight one with reading but their one the previous outing against liverpool i mean a 6-0 domination that is really really good and it's understandable that liverpool is a newly promoted team that that, that is you know kind of a an expectation of united um but i think what is important what i've seen from skinner is sure he's gotten the backing sure he has been able to sign those players to fill in multiple positions which is something that is very positive they've been reinforcing positions in multiple windows um and the fact that they've maybe not yet been able to stamp dominant when it w- wins they've been able to win And I mean, look at this season. They've already nicked points off Arsenal and City. They haven't been able to do that in a minute. That's four already four points from. I mean, they did have kind of a poor showing against Chelsea, but so that's good. They've had uh, against Arsenal, Chelsea, and City, and they've already nicked four points. That's more than they did last season, and both of those games against those clubs. And so, sure, they haven't maybe been able to. go against Arsenal school four five six goals but also that I feel like it's a tough task and against City sure they have been a little lackluster but I mean that is a Manchester derby you probably wouldn't you know you think these players are going to come in on their best day and so I think that is a valid concern for multiple fan bases because you look at that table it's very tight but the progression and the change that we've seen from last season is that they're winning games that they typically didn't win and it's those four points that they've already had off Arsenal and City that are crucial to that progression Yeah, like uh, last season, I would agree that you know we like uh, last season. I, I remember we lost to Chelsea heavily. I think six yeah. one or something. Then we lost two nil or one nil to Arsenal as well in November. Uh, mm-hmm. We drew the uh, Manchester derby, even though uh, Manchester City were a player down and United yeah. were winning two one, and they conceded a late winner. I think it was Ellen White. Yeah, so it was a two two. So yes, like if you compare those three games with the first three top mm-hmm. three, first three games that we've played against the big three, the traditional big three, I think yes, there we have made huge strides, no doubt, and we have also not drew drawn the games that we should have won last season. Like yeah, uh, last season we drew games to Everton, to Spurs. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember uh, Villa as well in the second half yeah. of the season, but this time around we've made huge strides, and that's a positive. I do agree. and uh, it's like my concern was basically that you know uh, reading 1-0 it's it's a blip i totally understand we defeated yeah. liverpool 6-0 and there was a lot of hype and maybe the nerves were too high for the players but then uh, leicester 1-0 again like that was a horrendous game because yeah. I, i i remember that uh, city chelsea arsenal might have scored four five goals against leicester and we only oh, wow. scored one mm-hmm. yeah so it's uh, like of course we we have made huge strides and you know right now i think we are at the top of the table on goal difference i believe so Or, yeah because chelsea's last game was postponed due to the icing ring that was created yeah. i don't know like this is a, that is a separate topic that we need to yeah. talk about later on mm. uh yeah so yeah the, the, like that that's that was just my concern because second half of the season like even under casey's last season we were first after like the first game of uh, january yeah. and after that we slipped away so this 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 been a voodoo a jinx around united that they yeah. usually a blip stumble in the every second. january is like their worst enemy or february is also the second worst enemy yeah. and i think that's totally fair i feel like that is i mean obviously not how you want your team to do but 
it's important to recognize and that the team recognizes and that Skinner recognizes that right after the winter break, we're facing issues in actually really showcasing what we want to showcase. What's going on here? Is this a mental thing? And I think talking about the mental aspect is something that's also improved from last season. Like you mentioned, there was games being drawn last season that there was, I mean, they just couldn't, they didn't, they didn't need to draw it. In fact, they'd be slipping up games in the last 15 minutes. What we've seen this season is that they've actually been winning games in the last few minutes. And so that is another progression in terms of, right, there's a mentality change is that when the team possibly looks defeated or when the team is already winning, there's not that lack of concentration anymore. It doesn't drop as much as it used to last season. And so clearly there is awareness of issues and kind of consistent problems that have risen in the previous seasons that this season has kind of wanted to change and has changed. Um, like you mentioned, obviously a blip against Leicester and Reading. I mean, Reading really saved on the last minute there, but it's not odd to see a team kind of struggle for one or two games within the season. I mean, Reading beat Chelsea last season. And so maybe Reading has a bit of a trend they want to keep on every single season to have a bit of a an upset or scare a, a fan base a little bit here and there. But as long as the team and Mark Skinner and the staff around recognize that this is an issue, then I think that's the first step of fixing it. And like I mentioned, they've shown to fix certain problems from last season. I mean, against Arsenal. They didn't look defeated. This was an away game at the Emirates, 2-2. It looked like the game was just, it could go neck and neck. And maybe, you could you could only speculate, but maybe this had taken place last season. Maybe Arsenal could have walked away with a draw or walked away with a win, possibly. And so there's that mindset shift. There's this, right, we cannot drop points. We cannot lose. We cannot walk away knowing we could have done more. And that is something that's really, really positive that we've been seeing this season. Yeah, the mindset shift. Like I was coming to this point now that yeah. mindset shift has been um, amazing. Like last season, we saw uh, we lost to Arsenal one nil or two nil no- in November, and mm-hmm. we looked knackered. Like we had a good break, one or one and a half week break, and <clears throat> we were just like you know it, it felt like we had come, we had gone to the game uh, to lose that game, and this mm-hmm. time around we were winning one nil. I suppose yes, we were winning one nil after the first half. And after mm-hmm. that, uh, after half time, two three minutes after half time, uh, Manam scored. I, I believe yes, Manam scored uh, one one. Yep. Then it became two one. And I think once you know, Mili Turner scored that equalizer, United thought, okay, mm-hmm. let's we we can change this game. Arsenal have let their guard down. So mm-hmm. with that aspect, I feel that yes, mentality shift has been there. Like we aren't giving up that easily. Yeah. Uh, but th- one thing that uh, you know has happened, like the goals that we've conceded, even though we haven't. L- we have only lost one and I think we haven't drawn any game. Uh, uh, so the, the one thing that still sometimes bothers me, of course, like I don't want, I, I want my team to be perfect. Like they don't, they shouldn't commit yeah. any mistakes. So as right. a fan, like this, this is something that I've observed. Uh, so after half time, after half time, like they usually shut off mentally. Uh, like yeah. they, they concede too easily. Like even against Arsenal, even though we won the game 3-2, that, that's mm-hmm. a good, good game. But yeah. uh, Manam scored two one one or two minutes after coming on in at half yeah. time. So mm-hmm. you know, with that aspect, I I would want us to improve. But it's like you said, we've won the games that we didn't win last season. Yeah. Uh, and right now we are at the top of the table. So hopefully things change. And like you said, if Mark Skinner sees a problem, he's trying to fix it. He's brought in Estelle Cascarino, who's another mm-hmm. great player who's played with PSG in Champions League. Another mm-hmm. good player to get on loan for now, but I think her contract expires in the summer. So we there's a buy option as well. Mm-hmm. If we want, we can buy her as well. And then there's Lisa Nelson, who's coming yeah. from SK Brand, I think is SK Brand. So mm-hmm. from Norway. Yeah, Norway. So this is a good addition, I believe, with the Jade as well. Yeah. I mean, for Lisa also, it's a record fee for the Norwegian. Um, I believe Roma was also in the race to get her, and Roma is also in a very similar position, uh, like United doing what they want to do in, in the Italian league. Um, but I think Lisa is going to add a lot of experience in that midfield. She's been involved, I believe, in the Norway system or the national team, and I want to say like U15, U16. She didn't get her like full debut until 2021 and like missed out on the Euros because of an injury. But you look at her minutes and what she has done in the Norwegian uh, league, 
she just, I mean, spills experience. She's already won the title twice, and this is what United needs in that midfield and area. I mean, she's also got Borisa, who she has worked with on the national team as well. So there's already some chemistry there, but she brings in experience because she's a winner. She's already won two league titles, missed out on the Euros. I mean, the Euros really Norway didn't have the best of times, so maybe she was probably better off actually not joining in the Euros, but she's also got the highest amount of minutes in the Norwegian League two consecutive times in 2019, 2020. A lot of minutes and winning titles just ex- is experience. And a lot of fans did look at her at her fee and be like, well, why are we buying this Norwegian player for 160k? That's a that's a big fee. But when AS Roma are in the ti- in in the race for bidding for her and United is also in there, it shows you that her experience is very valued. And I mean also not to take away from the fact that she holds that midfield really well. Skill wise, she's very, very She's not the most kind of like a tactical skilled player, but she's very physical and being able to hold that midfield, draw out kind of what to do, what to do, tell her players around her how to to, to navigate themselves because of her experience is going to be really good. I think it's been, I mean, what Zellum has been doing, especially with Lad, has been a very great partnership. So I'm not sure if she's going to be starting or how she's going to combine with those. But even if she is going to be more of a substitute player as like many were implementing, that's not a bad substitute to player to bring in any time. I mean, if you're drawing a game and you need that experience, you need that voice in the middle, you need that hold up player. She is exactly that player. Um, and I think this is a great addition for the middle players in there and probably will draw more competition, which will probably push the players in there to, to drive for more. Yeah, exactly. I think uh, you mentioned a great point that AS Roma were trying to bid for her and United, I have also bid for her. So, of course, yeah. there's something special in Lisa then. Like, why else would we go after her? Yeah. But there's this concern that Lisa also mentioned in an interview before she joined us when there were a lot of rumors floating around that United have done the deal and they hadn't till till then. So, there was this mm-hmm. thing that she said that, uh, you know, uh, the new Norwegian coach, I think her name's He Gris. Reese, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, she's looking at the game time that players are getting and initially towards the beginning of the season, Thoris mm-hmm. daughter was dropped because she wasn't starting much for United. Milde Borisa was dropped as well. So, Lisa also said that, you know, I need game time. And mm-hmm. He Gris also said when uh, Milde Borisa wasn't selected that the only reason why we haven't selected Borisa is because she hasn't played for her club. And now that the World Cup is approaching, like mm-hmm. I'm not saying Lisa is a bad addition. I'm just saying maybe the timing is a bit off for mm-hmm. a, the player's perspective because... The World Cup is approaching. There's already a lot of competition in this side. Mm-hmm. When will like Borisa isn't starting, and I'm not comparing the two players. I'm just saying that oh, yeah. Borisa isn't starting. Lucia Garcia isn't starting. Adriana yeah. Leon isn't starting. Mm-hmm. And not it's not even about the starting thing. It's about the minutes. game time they are getting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The minutes they are getting. I mean, so I would say that is something that is like messing with my mind right now. That why yeah. why why right now. Yeah, I mean, obviously, well, Skinner has an option to to extend. And with that, there's a lot of uh, conversation around, well, should we keep him? Should we not? And then that also fuels a lot of kind of negatives and positives of his game. And I think one of some of his negatives is that maybe he doesn't rotate enough um, or certainly the rotation isn't as good as it needs to be or as efficient as it needs to be. Now, talking about Lisa with your first with your first point there, I think that is a very interesting trend that I would assume they had discussed prior to signing the contract. I think Skinner is very, very aware of the fact that there is a World Cup coming up and that he's got some very precious players on his roster that if they don't get that spot, it's, I don't want to say build kind of animosity, but there's going to be frustration with the players returning from the World Cup or those who didn't get chosen with the fact, well, we came here and we're not getting the playtime. And so I would assume this is something that they did discuss beforehand because had she gone to Roma, minutes there probably would have been more, right? And like you mentioned, their Norwegian manager, probably not the most uh, popular with the fan base, but she has come out and publicly said, I need game time. Borussia wasn't there because I need game time. Um, and so I would assume this is something that they've already discussed prior to the contract signing. Sure, money obviously was a big thing because I'm assuming United put in much bigger money than Roma, but game time is just as important um and i would again i would hope this was discussed prior to the contract and that promises do get you know secured and planned out um rotation 
is a something is something that he has lacked or specifically the substitutes that he brings on one maybe not the most correct substitutes to probably a little bit later on the game maybe could have brought in a little bit earlier um is a constant kind of criticism around him like i said lucia garcia adriana leon is a mind baffling one again as a canadian i could be a little bit biased here but she hasn't i mean you could argue she really hasn't even gotten the chance to showcase what she can do and it's understandable that rachel williams i mean against the reading she she came on and scored that goal but you look at the trend rachel williams has been given that chance to come on multiple times before adriana leon or if he's looking for an impact sub it's rachel williams and so she's gotten that chance to kind of get comfortable in there get some play time which will read which will sorry lead into the result of what we saw her do against reading and so adriana leon one, she's much younger than Rachel Williams. Two, she is currently on form. When you look at her past year and a half with Canada, I mean, she's been on fire. Easily one of our best players. And Bev's, I mean, openly compliments her and, and talked about this again when I asked her about Adrian Leon. Is Leon can do, I remember her saying that she can do something out of nothing because you put her on the pitch and she can score bangers from outside of the box. Inside of the box, she's very kind of like, you know, I mean, her goal, she had a little, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, a back back heel goal for United. And so you see, when you put her in these situations, even in the box, it can get a little messy. She can find her footing in there, and so I think that is something that is very very weird that Leon has just not been given the chance at all. Not even in the cup. I mean, they had a FA Cup game early on this year, or sorry, uh, week against Sunderland. She didn't even come on. Didn't even start. Nothing. So unless there's something going on in the background that we just aren't aware of, or there's something going on in the training pitch that we are not seeing or we're not being told, I think it's hard to get my heart, my head around why Leon has just been completely left off. And I really hope this is not the case for Lisa. I hope this isn't what happens to Lisa because she's been doing really good in the Norwegian team. Uh, sorry, the, the Norwegian league uh, been getting consistent minutes. Leon, very similar, being con- getting consistent minutes on the national team, has been doing very well. So it's important when you've got these players, you keep them on form, right? I think it's kind of disappointing sometimes when you bring in a player who's on form, they don't get these minutes, they don't get these playing time at all, then they drop off form and then you're dealing with, right, well, when I bring them on, they're not doing what they need to do, right? They get benched again. And then it's kind of like a cycle that n- neither the player or you are getting the best of what you've bought. Um, and so I hope this is something that can get figured out. They're still in the FA Cup. I would like to see a little bit more rotation there. Um, but yeah, it probably wouldn't be the best trend to see Lisa follow in what Leon's been treated. I think uh, there's this special thing that you said that Rachel Williams has been brought on from the bench a lot of times. So mm. she settled in well into that role and, you know, getting accustomed yeah. to how she would impact a particular game. Mm-hmm. And that is what he would he should have done with Adriana Leon. Like, my con- my uh, agenda, like, agenda is a wrong word, but I'll go with it. <laughs> my agenda from the starting regarding Adriana Leon has been yeah. that if you are not starting her, then at least you sub her in around the 55th or the 60th minute. Yeah. But uh, with Mark, like, of course, I'm not attacking. Like, in the fan base right now, if we criticize, there's a discourse that we are attacking the manager. So yeah. I also, I like to put out a disclaimer that I'm not attacking. I'm just saying that he has the tendency to make his first substitution around the 70th or the 75th minute. Which is and pretty think, late. Yeah. When you have five substitutions, if you have third three, like I would have agreed to it to some extent. And also but... a, a good bench of substitutions, right? It's not like yeah. the substitutions that you bring on will greatly uh, drop how the team's doing or gr- drop that quality. I would say the quality is just as good when you do these substitutions. Make the most out of them. That's what I, when I say efficiency of substitutions, you've got it. Use it efficiently. And I think that exactly. is something that's been frustrating for the fan base and watching this from the outside and as a neutral, it's kind of interesting to see just why this has been a consistent thing since the start of the season. Yeah, like uh, like I'll just mention the bench right now. You have Thoris Dottir who starts mm-hmm. for Norway. Like she has come back into the team now. You have Ville Borisa who's also come back into the Norwegian setup. If she's not starting, but she's being subbed on in every Norway game. Yeah. You have uh, Adriana Leon who starts for uh, Canada a lot of times. 
Yep. Now you have Lisa Nelson as well. You have Town Kara who starts for France and has captained the side a lot of times. So yeah. it's not like you don't have a good bench. So you don't have the options to select from them. You have a good bench of experienced international players. Mm -hmm. So I think what he's done with Rachel Williams is the right thing to do. But he needs to implement that into others with as other well. With other players as well. Yeah, it's like it's it's. I I can imagine how difficult it must be for a manager to select. the 11 players out of a pool of around mm -hmm. 18 19 good players but like he's the manager and i am not so it's easy for me to say things and he, it's difficult for him that's that's understandable yeah. but yes like you said adriana leon even if you aren't a fan of united or canada it's a, it's a little weird because i saw her play in the concacaf uh, women's championship and he, she 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 did really well and then in between international breaks as well after the season started there were two games against australia i believe back yep. to back games mm -hmm. so uh, she scored in uh, i think she had around three three goal contributions in those games yeah so uh, you know it's it's a little like i don't see how yeah. she's not getting any game time and this is coming from a fan who greatly criticized adriana leon <laughs> like the adriana leon signing Fine. and then i thought okay let's mm -hmm. see how she plays then i saw the concacaf women's championship and i was like we have a great player who can yeah. play as a striker and a right winger as well like she puts in those great crosses as well so yeah. it's it's a little disheartening to mm -hmm. be honest not even frustrating now that she's not getting yeah. game time and i had the i had the chance to watch her play live in front of me she's so explosive that's another thing that she could really bring into that team because that's exactly what united needs and that's how they play with explosiveness you see Leah Golton she's explosive she can bring in explosiveness she can bring in kind of that fast snappy football she can play right wing she can play in the middle and she's very very good from far out the box that's something that sometimes when United is uh, struggling to not struggling specifically but going up against a low block or mid block sometimes it can be hard to get close into the box it can be quite challenging frustrating even you need a player who can and this is not to say that United is short of players that can shoot out of the box but Adriana Leon is definitely a, spe a specialist with that and so obviously Jade Rebel joining her in there i'd assume they had private conversations about this but even going back to to the signing she had spent three and a half years at, at West Ham and there was a lot of interest from Spain to get Leon because of the quality that she offers. And I think from a lot of talking about the Canadians from here they were very happy to see this signing purely because it was a step up of, of players around her. Maybe West Ham didn't have the most kind of high level players around Leon that were struggling to get the best out of her and when we see her in the Canadian setup she has she's surrounded by really great players that bring the best out of her. And so it was kind of a similar story here with United that she was going to be surrounded with great high level players just like herself they're going to bring out the best of her and those around her but unfortunately very oddly she just haven't been given the chance to 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 you know showcase her skills i'm really hoping in the cup games i know united are out of the county cup quite disappointing but for the fa cup moving forward um if she's not getting minutes or or even starting time i'd be quite worried and i would not be surprised to see something going up with her contract and I know it's a two year contract but you never know it can get a little bit messy <laughs> I think uh, in the Sunderland games match reaction I started with uh, the saying that if uh, it like if if there is no drama there's no Manchester United it yeah. always has to be a drama around True. this club yeah so I think uh, Th this this particular point that you made about Rachel Williams getting those minutes to make that impact to get uh -huh. accustomed to that role that is something that will stay with me forever like this is something that substitute like for a substitute you need mm -hmm. to ensure this is implemented you uh, substitute them a lot of time so that they mm -hmm. get uh, adapt they they adapt to the role yeah. so yeah that's something that has been like you you've you've been pinpoint with that analysis mm -hmm. and that is something that needs to happen with Leon as well Uh, so so talking about leon uh, j drivier yeah elisa chapman yeah uh, fleming so many players but yeah. there is a there's a common ground there is one mutual thing between them and it's canada it canada is. are in the women's world cup they won the yeah. uh, olympics as well yep. they got a silver medal in the concacaf championship uh, mm -hmm. i think it was against usa the final yeah always yeah. <laughs> <laughs> concaf yeah. final trend is very much usa canada <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, they got a silver. I think they yeah. they did well in the tournament as a whole. Uh, yeah. Adriana Leon was amazing. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, we'll talk about Canada for a bit. Uh, so Mariam, what do you think uh, are the chances that Canada lift that trophy? I mean, we're winning they... it, right? We've got to be. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, I think talking about the group draw, we've probably got the hardest group in there i believe i mean if my brain is serving me right here i believe it's uh jamaica jamaica in there australia canada and ireland and those are not easy draws at all um but i do think we've got very good chances of getting under the group um i feel what brev is doing with the team is very special um over the 2022 year we were able to get matchups against various different teams from the CONCACAF, from Asia, from uh, we were able to even go up against Morocco. So we were very good in diversifying and versatiling the players and the different styles we're going up against. And Bev is very adamant that this is one of the best things that you could do in preparation for a World Cup is expose your players and yourselves and your philosophy to as many different other philosophies as you can. Because not only is that going to serve you well in how you develop your own philosophy, but in a tournament game like the World Cup, you need to be able to rely back on your backup plans and be like, right, when we played against this, X, Y, and Z happened. So what we can do, you've already got these templates. So collecting templates during the 2022 campaign was great. The Olympics, we've won it. I think that's great momentum that we can take on going into now. 2023, we're already in the She Believes Cup. Very great competition against Japan, Brazil, and the USA. Three completely different uh, matchup styles, but this is exactly what we need. Um, and so what Bev is doing, getting the, as many different games as we can, is fantastic. Um, I think, realistically, I would see us probably go into the semifinal if I'm to do kind of like a bit of a mathematical how no, the teams no, would no. end up lifting the trophy They're oh 100 yeah. <laughs> yeah. no no i mean no other conversation there um realistically i feel like we could definitely draw into the semi-final and just lose on that final tight spot but would i be i mean i'm betting on we go to the final and win it we've got the experience we got the players like i said bev has been doing outstanding work the fact that we were able to knock out the us and sweden back to back in in the olympics that's not an easy task at all it's been developing often canada was described as more of a defensive boring they just hold up the ball but what bev has been able to come and do is that keep that defensive minded football but also be able to build from the back into very attacking threats and we've got an incredible set of attacking players i mean I can sit here and mention how good every single forward player is, how they contribute to the game and and how they can really put us out in kind of like sticky situations. So the system that we've put in together is really, really solid. I think people continuously underestimate Canada and what we can do. And I think being in the group of death is going to serve us well because it will prepare us for what's to come later. And and teams are going to be taking a big note of, of what Canada and Bev are going to be doing together. And so going into this World Cup, there's a lot of high expectations, aspirations, and we're probably going to live up to that very, very well. Yeah, I would hope so. And this is not wishful thinking. I think no. Canada have a very good chance of, you know, yeah. uh, upsetting a lot of nations who think they are in the hunt. Mm. Like Canada should also think they are in the hand, but you know, I always like those dark horses in a tournament, and I think Canada can be the, the, the dark, dark horse. Yeah. Then again, uh, a dark horse might not be in a title race, but I think Canada are in a title race in the yeah. world of title race. Uh, sure. I think uh, with what you mentioned, Bev has transformed this Canadian setup to a mm. whole new, different level. And yeah. she has been here for some time. Like, yeah. this is not something that she's come up in the last one year or two years. She's yeah. been in this setup for a long time. So she knows what to implement and how to make a cohesive unit so that uh, you have, like you mentioned, you, you should have a lot of plans. And I think, uh, you know, watching Bev, uh, there has been a lot, like, I, I'll just associate this with the United fan base now. Mm -hmm. uh, United fans have started watching Can Canada games as Good. well ever <laughs> since Adriana Leon joined us. Uh, so yeah, uh, people are saying if tomorrow we have to change a manager, 
let's bring Bev in. Bev. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she is English, so a yeah. move to the WSL would make sense for her. But um, only after she lifts the World Cup for Canada. Yeah, like, we're trying to keep her for be, now here. <laughs> yeah, that would be poetic. Yeah, no, she, she's she been, in, I mean, she's very young. She's one of the youngest managers in the team. And uh, a lot of fans joke about this. I mean, she's younger than Christine Sinclair. It's quite funny to have a manager younger than the captain in the team. But even though she's so young, she, well, first of all, she has a modern understanding of the game. And that beats a lot of more experienced, older managers within the game. And another thing is that she's been involved in the Canadian system for a very long time. She left to go. To, she was a, um, the Lioness assistant coach for a while and then came back to Canada with a lot of experience there and has been given a very hard task. She was given a team that had a lot of potential and expectations, but weren't kind of fully exceeding and were, weren't f- fully able to show that potential under, under John Herdman, who was a great coach for us. He he now currently serves with the men's Canadian team. So she was given that task and was given a lot of expectations, was thrown into this quite fast prior to the Olympics. And, and I would assume there was a lot of pressure on her, but how she's dealt with this. And I think this probably came at a very great time in terms of COVID, which sounds weird because during the Olympics, there was no fans, right? And I think that probably adds a little bit more to, right, it's just me, my squad, my 23 players, my staff, and this is us here trying to, you know, shine. And so I think that Olympics, what she showed, that resilience, that kind of flexible mindset of, right, if we're in trouble, what are we doing? If we are finding some trouble in the midfield, what are we switching around? She's quite versatile, and this is something that we have enjoyed seeing from the Canadian fan base. I've spoken to her to multiple press conferences, and she really does. She she has an honest love for the game and for the players. Like I mentioned, she's involved in recruiting all of these young players. She's clearly within the system, keeping up with the U twenty ones, nineteens, seventeens. Is very aware of the different provincial programs, the soccer programs around here, and and really has a really good eye for potential. And when you've got a, a manager like that, even though young, she's great and. Like I mentioned, Canadians always are, are like, in Bev, we trust. And I think it's no different going into the World Cup because in Bev, we do trust. <laughs> in Bev, we all trust because yes. I think uh, it's time, you know, uh, a Canadian team, like this Canadian team winning the World Cup would be really special uh, yeah. because there are two United players. That's my main thing. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. yes, like, uh, I do hope it's a good tournament for Bev as well because uh, after, like, I think uh, that Tokyo Olympics was the moment when, you know, Canada was put out onto the map and everyone was like, okay, Mm -hmm. we need to be, you know, afraid of this team because I think you defeated USA as well in the semifinals and then you went to the finals to defeat Sweden who were considered the, you know... Favourites to win it. uh, Favourites to win it. And even in the Euros as well, we saw how good this Sweden team is. So... And in yeah, the Arnold indeed. Clark Cup. I mean, I know that's yeah. a, a friendly, but we came up against yeah. Germany and England and, and drew a pretty good game with England, who Serena was in charge of. It was a, it was yeah. pretty fun to see Bev go, go up against her her previous players, which she probably had good insights on. Um, but yeah, like you mentioned, they've been diversifying the players they're coming up against, the teams, the philosophies. They've won two bronze medals at the Olympics, but this kind of crack at gold was right. We're, you know, we're, we're here and we're trying to prove something. And, and Bev... Is is on a mission with 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 the squad that she's working with, and it's it's really exciting to see. It's yeah, it's great. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, like Bev would enjoy playing against Sarina's, uh, you know, yeah. Sarina's side. I think I've also enjoyed this podcast a lot today, and uh, I'd say this is this has been the most fun conversation <laughs> that I've had because you get to hear someone some uh, some other. Someone else's opinion. Yeah. I'm sorry, slip of tongue right now. You're right. <laughs> yeah, after that Sunderland game, yeah, you 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 might <laughs> understand. <laughs> uh, Hope is given back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so thank you so much, Mariam. It's been like I'm not even sugarcoating it. I'm not just saying because you are here, but it's been yeah. amazing. And wow. uh, you know, getting to know about Lisa, getting to know about Jade, you know, getting those can- Canadian hopes high for the fans yes. as well. So. I'm sure uh, our subscribers would love your content as well. So, guys, <laughs> if you haven't already subscribed to it, then why? Why haven't you subscribed <laughs> to her channel? Go to the link in the description, subscribe to the channel, come back and then watch that ACL video. Because I'm telling you, that's a very, very, very informative video. 
and you know uh, she's worked hard uh, the specialist i don't remember her name but she also Hana. has worked Hana Hana. yeah yes. and has also worked very hard uh, in you know get, getting the research done and everything so ensure to watch that video as well let's get mariam channel to 1k subscribers by the start <laughs> of the world cup uh, mariam do you, like any parting words for now i just want to say thank you for your time i've had again a great conversation it's really good to 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 talk to united fans and see how excited they are with the signing of jade um and some of the frustration with leon it's been a very exciting great season for united i think they're in a very good run hopefully securing that third spot i think from an outsider this is great for the league great for what the wsl is striving and aiming for and obviously great for a big club like united who needs to be playing european football the players that they have are some of the most top notch players in the game they deserve this top notch football and um yeah it's it's really exciting days ahead for for united and again i want to thank you for for having me here and and chatting all about canada jade Uh, Lisa and I just want to mention one thing really quickly I have a lot of content coming up for the She Believes Cup uh, where we d- I'm going to discuss Canada the United States Brazil and Japan so if you want to hear more about Canada and their chances of how they're going to be doing in the World Cup then hop on I'll, I'll keep you updated <laughs> Yeah guys so please do subscribe to our channel and if you liked our video do subscribe to our channel if you already haven't you do let it. us know what you would like to hear from us what you would like to see from us and we'll ensure to get mariam back before the world cup begins so yes. that we <laughs> gather more canadian fans and you know we ex like can canada also exceed uh, the expectation in the world cup yeah so thank you so much mariam for coming thank again you. Uh, and uh, yeah take care stay safe guys uh, keep supporting manchester united and women's football uh, i'll talk to you later thank you so much thank you